and welcome. Have you ever noticed that there's so much emphasis around meeting the one, finding the one, attracting the right one, meeting the right guy? There's a lot of emphasis in our world on magazine covers, in this industry of dating and relationships centered around that. What we don't see as often or as frequently as I think would be valuable is this idea about being the one, being the one woman. And this is something that I would like to talk to you about today. I'm Michelle Merchant Johnson with Love Life Coaching, and I want to share with you five tips for being the one woman that the right man will fall madly in love with. Now, I'm just going to have time to touch on these today, but I hope this will generate some thought and inspiration for you in terms of how you show up in the world, how you show up in your interactions with men, and I hope that it will give you a little bit of a lift in terms of owning your own value and being that one woman, knowing that the right man will see you, be attracted to you, and will want to step up and be there for you. So the first key to being the one woman is simply what I was just speaking about. You are deeply centered in your own value. You know you are a woman of high value. You know what you bring to the table. You know what you have to offer And you honor that part of yourself and you show up in the world authentically and being the best version of you. And you're centered in knowing your own value so that things that might be happening or not be happening with any certain man don't completely throw you off the track to the point that it makes you question your own worth or your own value. Now, this can be easier said than done for sure. But being centered in knowing your own value is really a foundational piece to showing up as that one woman that can be seen by the right man. Tip number two is you embody feminine strength and softness. And you notice I said strength and softness because I believe femininity, true femininity, embodies both of those qualities and characteristics. Now, femininity or being feminine is kind of a concept that is a little bit confusing to some women and even sometimes implies like weakness, like the damsel in distress kind of an, an idea. But I believe true femininity really does embody strength and softness, the softness and the gentleness in how you might show compassion for other people the softness in how you might express yourself or your emotions, the softness in terms of being open-hearted and loving in the world. And these are beautiful, much-needed feminine gifts in our world. But it also embodies strength, strength for having convictions of what you feel is right, strength for believing in your dreams, strength for standing up for those people that are unable to stand up for themselves, or strength for uh, holding yourself accountable to be true to what is right for you. I believe all of this actually is a part of a truly feminine woman, a woman who really knows who she is and owns her own femininity. So sure, there are things like about the way you dress or the way you move or the way your body is shaped or what you do with your hair or your makeup. Those kinds of things can help you tap into your femininity, but I believe it goes much deeper than that. Like it's a, it's your essence. It's your true essence and it includes and embraces all of you, the strength, the softness, the fears, the dreams, the hopes everything. And so owning that and possessing that and being an embodiment of that in how you move through the world, I believe is part of being the one woman that can be seen by the right man. This is not about being attractive to every man out there. This is about being inviting and attractive to the right man, the man who will resonate with the true essence of who you are. 
The third tip is you set and maintain standards and boundaries that are right for you. I believe as women, we are blessed with gifts. And one of those gifts is what we might call feminine intuition. If you say it in a little more raw way, it's like that gut feeling. But most women have a really good internal guide about what is right for them, what feels good to them, what makes them feel like they're being true to themselves, to their values, to what's important to them. And it's really important as you navigate through the world that you create standards and boundaries around that, meaning that if a man or if someone is pushing in or leaning in on your boundaries or doing something that doesn't feel right or good to you, you have the strength and the confidence and the conviction to uh, let that person know what would work better for you. You can do it in a nice way initially, unless it's something really egregious. And you let this person have the opportunity to make an adjustment or adapt. I've been interviewing so many men lately because I'm preparing for another upcoming man panel series, which many of you may have participated in in the past. But I have an all new series coming out. And one of the things that's coming forward really clearly from these men, there are always themes that show up. One of the themes that's showing up is how most men, most good men out there who care about women really do want to please you. And they need to know, they need our help to know in many cases what that would look like. Because there is some confusion around what women want, and that's not always the same for every woman. And these men, these good men, they don't want to, you know, push the wrong buttons. They want to show up in a way that supports you, but sometimes they need a little bit of help around that. So sometimes that has to do with being able to uh, express our wants, needs, and preferences. Sometimes that has to do with setting a st standard or a boundary. And when you are willing to do this, it's actually really sexy because it sets you apart from those women that just kind of go along to get along or who pretzel themselves into being who they think a man might want them to be. So when you're clear about what feels good to you and you're able to express that by being in touch with your own internal guide, this is one way that you can be seen as the true version of you and the right man is going to resonate with that. He's going to resume, resonate with who you are. The next tip is that you truly love and respect yourself. Now, part of loving and respecting yourself, this is a huge topic, but part of loving and respecting yourself is you have enough respect for yourself to walk away from situations if you're not being treated well if something is not able to, you know, if you're, if you give someone a standard or a boundary or express a need or a preference and they're not willing or able to adapt and that's something that's a deal breaker for you, you have the confidence and the clarity to walk away from those situations that are not right for you. Part of loving and respecting yourself is that you are true to what is right for you. You make your decisions based on knowing your own value and you don't try to please everyone. You recognize the right person, the right man will be attracted to who you are because of who you are and because he can see that, not because you're trying to morph into or adapt into what you think a certain man might want. This is just a tiny little piece of loving and respecting yourself but that's a place to start. Um, the fifth tip is you accept and appreciate men. And this sounds kind of funny or kind of obvious, but here's a big secret, a very obvious secret. Men like women who like them. And so many men, as I interview these men, express how deep their desire is to be appreciated, to be accepted and to have us respect them. Now, I absolutely believe that men should respect women. I think there's a huge need for that in the world. 
And in fact, in a recent interview I did with John Gray, he mentioned how important he thinks it is for men to respect women. I also believe, though, men are yearning for that respect. Now, they do have to be deserving of it, but I also believe that um, acceptance and acknowledgement of men for the things that they do, for who they are, when it's deserving, is something that is going to go such a long way toward drawing the right man toward you. And I've even had some of my clients experiment with going out there in the world and looking for men doing good things, like catching men in the act of doing good things. And I recognize if you've been deeply hurt or disappointed by a man or men in your life, there may be some healing to do. You may need some support around that, some counseling or some therapy. There may be a need for some forgiveness of men in your life from the past, there may be a need for healing and support. However, um, and I absolutely suggest you get that if you feel there's a need for that. However, if you're finding that your general overall attitude or thoughts about men are coming up as being a little on the negative side, energetically, it's likely that men you come in contact with or might date are going to feel that. And conversely, they're going to feel if you like, appreciate, acknowledge, and respect them. So these are just five quick tips uh, toward helping you be that one woman, that one woman that can be seen, appreciated, adored, and loved by the right man for you. I have so much more to say around this and we'll give some more concrete examples in future videos, but I hope this gets you thinking and I hope it gets you started. And remember, go out there, hold your head high, and remember that you are a woman of high value and begin, if you're not doing it already, by making your decisions from being centered in that knowledge and knowing your own intrinsic value no matter what is or isn't happening with any one particular man out there. I'm sending you love, cheering you on, and thanking you for joining me. Please leave a comment below, click the like button, and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll be producing regular content and I would love to have you join me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now.